Hello YouTube. So a little over a year ago, I had a vasectomy and I made a video about it at the time. Um, but now I'm making another video about it because I think it's good to be vocal about this sort of thing. Um, and also, frankly, I mean, my life has been a series of questionable decisions. This particular decision was possibly the best one I ever made. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about it. Um, well, I guess I've just put my cards on the table about how I, uh, how I feel about it on reflection. Uh, on reflection, I think, wow, that was one hell of a good idea. Um, you know, one benefit of uh, sterilization that I didn't expect, I didn't see coming, um, was I've had, ever since doing that, a real sense of comfort in my own body to a degree that I uh, I just sort of didn't see. I mean, I, so here's the thing. Obviously, there's there's a practical benefit to doing it. I mean, that was, I mean, yeah, obviously, that's why I did it, right? Like, I don't want kids, and this removes the possibility of having kids, and that does naturally make you more comfortable. I mean, ultimately, look, uh, in my whole life before then, whenever I... Uh, whenever I had sex, there was, uh, or at least certain types of sex anyway, there was the feeling of there being a gun pointed at my head. Um, and that's gone now. Uh, that's no longer the case. And that's very nice. Um, but I think that the the sense of comfort goes a bit deeper than that. You know, it's not just, it's not just like, well, sex no longer has this risk. Um, there's a feeling of just every day, whenever I reflect on this, uh, of it just being like, wow, I'm, I'm like, this is, this is kind of more how I want to be. I mean, I think it's interesting, you know, because I, I've never had any, any sense of um, gender identity. Uh, the only reason why I do not present in a much more androgynous way is because, uh, well, I mean, it's two reasons. First of all, I'm incredibly lazy. And secondly, I don't really care, right? Like, I don't care enough about presenting in an androgynous way to overcome my laziness. Um, so it, it just doesn't bother me, right? Obviously, I'm a man. I'm going to be classified as a man. I recognise that and I'm fine with it because I just don't care one way or the other. Um, but, you know, it's interesting to me to consider the sorts of worries that some men have about vasectomy. Uh, where there's this feeling of emasculation. There's a feeling of, well, won't it make me less of a man? Um, whereas for me, uh, I never saw myself as much of a man in the first place. Uh, I was, I, I'm not worried about this at all, at all. And in fact, I, I, I sort of wonder if like, you know, it's almost as if like removing one of these central biological markers of manhood <laughs> has kind of made me feel like, yeah, you know, my, my, my sort of self-conception is now more in line with the body I've got, uh, which has given me, in a very small way, perhaps a slight understanding of, of how trans people feel, which is not something, as much as I'm very much, you know, pro-trans, I do not have negative views about trans people at all. Um, it wasn't something I got in a, in a sort of like I could kind of understand it intellectually but it wasn't something I could empathize with because for me it's my attitude has always been like why would you care what like why why does it who care who cares right what gender you present as right I mean I just I, I never got again just on a purely emotional level like why that would matter so I never felt that um you know and, and actually it's not just trans people um even cisgender people right like it I have no doubt that there are there are many uh, cisgender people I know who you know if they were to sort of wake up one day in a in a different body um, if they were to wait you know if if uh, my brother was to wake up tomorrow with breasts and a vagina I, I imagine it would be a source of very great distress for him uh, and that's something I never got you know I never quite got but now I'm sort of thinking I don't know maybe I kind of get an inkling of what that's all about um, because there is this feeling of like I have. Um, I have, in a sense, like, shifted my body in a very slight way to a more, it's like slightly more on the, uh, in, in the gender neutral direction, right? Like, I've, I've removed one of these things that is, uh, again, you know, one of the central markers of, like, maleness. Um, and I really like that. 
Uh, and this was something I didn't expect. So uh, anyway, that's that's a relatively minor thing. Of course, that's not um, that's not the main reason to have a vasectomy, <laughs> uh, and that wasn't one of the motivations. The motivations were, were were you know were purely practical. I do not want kids, and um, I think you know if anything, as I've gotten older, I've just become more and more militant uh, about not wanting kids. Um, I have never had in my whole life, I've never had even the slightest uh, hint of parental instincts. Uh, I just, I, I don't want anything to do with children. I don't want the responsibility. I don't want to have to, you know, pony up the money that would be required. I mean, they're expensive. They're an incredible drain on your time. Um, I like being free. I like being able to go to sleep and just sleep through the day until 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, I like being able to just lounge around and watch TV. Uh, I like being able to, you know, do things as well. You know, I like being able to travel. I like being able to uh, just get up and be like, OK, I'm going away for a couple of weeks um, when, when, I, when I'm able to, at least. I mean, at the end of the day, look, uh, it, I mean, my life is not, like, amazing, right? Uh, I'm often quite tired. I often feel like I have no time to do the things that I really want to do. A child would, of course, just eat into what little time I have. Um, similarly, I don't have a great deal of money. I, uh, you know, I mean, I'm obviously not, <laughs> I'm not in poverty, right? But, um, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of money for luxuries. And uh, a child would, again, just eat away all of that. I mean, having a kid, you're going to hemorrhage money. Um, I'm an introvert. I like solitude. I like silence. Uh, so there's just, I, I remember when I was, um, w when I first learned about the process of sexual re reproduction at about 11 years old. Wait, no, it would have been earlier than that. Must have been earlier because we did it when I was, uh, um, when I was in primary school. I would have been I don't know, seven or eight. Uh, yeah, um, let's go with seven or eight. When I first when I first learned about that process, I thought, well, that's something that I'm never going to do ever. <laughs> uh, no way. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to come anywhere within the uh, ballpark of this whole sexual reproduction thing. Um, of course, I then got a little bit older, and I realised, oh, damn, this is that's actually something that I really want to do. I really want to do that particular activity. Um, <laughs> and luckily there are methods of birth control. But uh, I know that from a very young age, I think, I mean, as soon as I heard, as soon as I discovered this vasectomy thing, I was like, oh, you know, that sounds like it's probably a good idea. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it is, um, it is surgery, right? It's a, it's a big deal in that sense. It's not something you can just sort of, you know, can't just snap your fingers and buy it from a shop, right? Um, so it is a big deal. It's 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 a big thing. Uh, and uh, but eventually I did it uh, at thirty one, which is a bit too late, really. I wish I was. Uh, I wish I did it when I was younger. Um, although to be fair, you know, we still live in a world where people's you know it, the 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 sort of you know medical decisions that adults make um, are uh, there's still a lot of paternalism, right? And so the decision that an adult makes about their own body is not necessarily going to be respected. It can be quite difficult to get sterilized, um, certainly before 30. And, you know, if you have no kids, if you if you have no kids and you're uh, and you're in your 20s, um, it might be kind of tricky to find someone willing to do it, um, which is kind of annoying because you sort of think, I mean, if you're going to get sterilized, you want to you want to do it. You want to do it young. So you get the maximum the maximum amount of uh, benefit from it, right? Um, anyway, uh, anyway, I've, I, I've, I've done it now and I'm, I'm very glad. I will say this as well, you know, um, I'm, one of the things I've realized is like, I, one of the things I would say is, it's not just for me, it's not just that uh, I don't want my own kids. I hate children. Right. Uh, I sometimes talk, I sometimes like hear other child free people who will kind of say, well, you know, I'm uh, I, I don't want kids of my own. I, I couldn't do the responsibility. I wouldn't be a good parent. But like, you know, yeah, I like children. I uh, hey, I'd be a good uncle. Um, no, I hate children. I hate them. I don't want anything to do with them. I <laughs> uh, they're noisy. They're annoying. Um, they're horrifyingly unhygienic. Um, I don't really know how to talk to them. I mean, I'm bad at talking to people 
people in general. Uh, so I, my social skills are not great. Um, but like with kids, it's like, I, it's just, there's, there's this other layer where it's of like difficulty communicating, um, and just problems with like kind of social norms. And, you know, it's, it, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to, t it's difficult enough when I'm just talking to another adult, never mind a kid. Whenever I'm near children, I, uh, I'm always looking forward to not being near them. Um, so for all of these reasons, um, I think, wow, what a great decision that was. And I, um, and, and, you know, this is why I'm just, I'm just expressing it. I think it's, there's so many, so many times in life where you will encounter people being vocally pro-natalist, um, or, or vocally, or, or very vocal about, you know, the, the joys of having a family and all of this. And I just want to be somebody who's vocal about not doing any of that. Uh, <laughs> so, so there we are. Um, that you are occasionally, this is going to be something you'll see me do. Um, every day, I think to myself, "What a brilliant idea it was! What what a brilliant move! That was the best decision I ever made." I, literally every day, I think, "Man, I'm glad that I'm sterile. I'm glad I made that decision." It's like, uh, in a way, it's almost as if I've given myself a safety net. It's like, no matter how badly I screw up in life, and again, you know, look, I've screwed up in some pretty big ways, but no matter how badly I screw up, there's a flaw, right? It's, I'm never going to screw up that badly. You know, I can go out, I can just walk out of my house and look around the world and see people who have screwed up in a terrible way. And I'm never going to screw up that badly. Now, of course, I know, I know, right, they have different attitudes and values that's great, that's nice for them, right? So they don't see it as a screw up, right? The people with kids, they're, they're very happy, with, well, not all of them, some of the people with kids are very happy with their decision, um, and so it's not a screw up, I get that. But I mean, to me, it would be a massive screw up. That would be like the biggest screw up possible, and that's never gonna happen now, result. Um, so, you know, look, that's how I feel about it. Now, there's another thing I want to address here, which um, when I made the original video on vasectomy, uh, I made it with my friend Cole because she's also been sterilized. And we made a conscious decision not to address uh, antinatalism. Um, so not to frame things in a pessimistic way because, well, we just sort of wanted to present, you know, like, look, this hey, we're just child-free people who are very happy and, uh, you know, that's cool and it's just a decision you can make. But, you know, look, I mean, it's inevitable that when you talk about sterilization as a philosopher, this question of antinatalism is going to come up, right? Um, like, is it morally acceptable to have children? Is it acceptable for, uh, for anybody to have children, uh, even if they want children? Um, I mean, I think that my sort of take on this is it's pretty I, i'm i'm very you know like let's say I, I would describe myself as very strong very much antinatalist adjacent um but i'm not ultimately in favor of antinatalism um i mean you know I, I guess the way i would see this is there's a couple of reasons uh i mean first of all i just don't find the arguments for it ultimately persuasive um i think that um you know, when you when you take something like Benatar's asymmetry argument, for instance, um, my 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 take on on that sort of argument has always been, it's more of a to me, it's it's the sort of thing where, if the world were good, that that sort of argument would just be a kind of puzzle. Um, I mean, if you could like, because here's the thing, right? If you could if if you could guarantee, you know that any, anybody that gets brought into existence is going to have, you know, 100 years of pleasure um, or a thousand years or 10,000 years of pleasure or infinite pleasure. Like bringing, being, maybe we just eradicate death, right? So you can just have uh, immortality, pleasure, and it's just brilliant. But there's like one second of slight suffering. Well, if you follow the logic of Benatar's asymmetry argument, you're going to have to conclude, no, you ought not to bring that person into existence either. And to me, that just seems kind of ridiculous. Uh, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like, yeah, okay. I, I, my reaction to that is, okay, I want to work out, like, 
where this little puzzle has gone wrong rather than rather than just embrace the conclusion that like no you ought not to bring into existence somebody it's like you ought not to bring into existence somebody who would have an infinite li like infinite life of joy um with just like one little second of pain um so uh you know, look, I won't get into this in any detail, but it, it, just to say, um, because this is just me talking off the top of my head, that's why I'm not going to get into this in any detail. But I just want to say, look, ultimately, I'm not persuaded by these sorts of in principle arguments, um, these arguments that it is necessarily wrong uh, to bring people into existence or close to being necessarily wrong to bring people into existence. I, th I think that uh, I, I say that I'm sort of antinatalist adjacent because... I think the world is really bad. I mean, I think it sucks. Um, and even in, even when one looks at uh, people who've got it relatively good, I still think you have it very bad. Um, you know, so the, if you take my life, for example, I mean, I've gotten remarkably lucky. Uh, been, uh, you know, it's not like I'm, it's not like I'm starving. Um, it's not like I've been sent to war, right? It's not like I have some uh, debilitating illness. I, I mean, my life is um, probably one of the better lives uh, that anybody uh, that anybody has ever led. Um, you know, I've I've been I've been very lucky in many many ways. I've even managed to um, you know somehow make. Uh, at least something of a living doing the thing I kind of want to do. I have a remarkable degree of freedom compared to many people. But, you know, like all of this said, um, I think that, uh, you know, the, it, like to me, I just look at the the degree of, uh, of, of just terrible stuff. Uh, uh, and the fact that like even a good life has got a lot of terrible stuff in it. Even in relatively good circumstances, for instance, you're still going to have to, you're still going to be forced into labor in order to survive, right? Forced into work in order to live, um, which to me, I, I just think, I mean, look, it's not like chattel slavery. It's not as bad as that, but I still think that's really bad. Um, you know, the, the idea that, uh, you know, like, the, why do people, you know, go to work ultimately? I mean... I guess some people enjoy it, but, you know, <laughs> you do it because you have to, for, for many people, uh, for many people. I mean, certainly I think a lot of the, a lot of the work that I've done in my life, even when it's work that I've chosen to do, even when it's, um, you know, like, look, when I was at university doing the PhD, um, yeah, in a sense, that was something that I was interested in and I chose to do it, but I was still getting paid for it and I wouldn't have done it unless I was getting paid for it. And that's because, you know, there's this, it's, again, it's the gun being pointed at your head. It's like, you have to do this or you die, right? That's, that's awful. That's awful. It's an awful situation. I, I, I you know, I mean, and, and like, yes, we can all recognize that it's an awful situation that pretty much everybody faces. Um, so, you know, we're all in it together. That doesn't make it any better. If anything, that makes it worse, right? <laughs> If only, like, if we had a world where only 10% of people were forced to work in order to survive, um, things would be much better. Uh, but that's not, that's not the world, is it? Um, and then on top of this, even when you get the things that you want, you often find that they're not as impressive as you might have hoped. Uh, I mean, this is the case with, uh, you know, my interest in philosophy, for instance. Uh, like... On the one hand, I, I do love philosophy. It's what I spend my life doing. But on the other hand, I have to recognize that a lot of the time it's frustrating. A lot of the time it's boring. And it's very, very rare that I ever have a sense of deep and lasting satisfaction uh, from any of the things that I, that I do with philosophy. <clears throat> um, no, I just, uh, you know... I just read things as the interest takes me. Um, you know, I write these videos. Uh, I do get some pleasure from uh, creating these sorts of things and uploading them, but it's not that much. I feel like the best we can hope for in life is uh, a sort of state of contentment, uh, freedom from pain. And it turns out that even that is very difficult to maintain. Uh, so it's not a good situation. So, you know, I, I think the truth is, is that 
not only do I just personally have no desire to have a kid, I also have no desire to see the to see human civilization continue. I have no investment in this particular project whatsoever. I think humanity is uh, is by my judgment a failure. I'm I'm not impressed. Um, uh, so I, I have no desire to see it continue and I don't want to contribute to it. Um, do I judge those who do contribute to it? Not really. Uh, no, um, ultimately I'm, I'm not really inclined to, uh, tell other people what to do. So <clears throat> I, I just can't quite bring myself to, um, to say, you know, get on some sort of high horse and be like, you know, it's morally wrong to have kids. Um, uh, I guess if you're comfortable, you know, bringing another person into this, uh, into this existence, I mean, <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, uh, you know, yeah, uh, I, I think that's, I think that's all I have to say for now. Um, but those are my reflections on, 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 on being sterilized. And again, while, <sighs> So for me, what it comes down to is there's no question that the, the ultimate motivation was purely personal, right? It's purely that I, I don't want kids. Um, there have been, however, unexpected collateral benefits. And frankly, I do think that, that life is basically terrible. Um, and that's also a very good reason not to do it. Uh, but I'm not really inclined to be, uh, to be judgmental. So um, I guess... Uh, I guess I'll just leave it there. Um, all right then. Well, <clears throat> that's that.